So as I continue my rehabilitation from a decade away from Warhammer Fantasy and prepare for my first games of Age of Sigma Warhammer World in a few weeks, I've decided to supplement my Skaven army building with one from the Shyish Realm of Death. With the new Nighthaunt Battle Turn released, I bought myself one of the limited edition sets with the intention of developing a Nighthaunt force for the models in the Age of Sigma box set which I acquired last week. So just as with the Age of Sigma set itself, I've decided to go for the bonus pack with lots of other stuff in it. Uh, the Nighthawk dice, I want to look at this. There's supposed to be something a little bit special about those. Look at those in a minute. The War Scroll cards, of course. Uh, endless Spells. I mean, Endless Spells is something I'm going to work towards. I'm not going to be starting that to begin with, especially with small games. But for when I do, those are the models for it. And in fact, um, it would likely be a Nighthawk based army that I would first use Endless Spells with because... You know, uh, quite a lot of the characters there are wizards. And then, of course, the battle tome itself. So the first thing I actually want to do <laughs> is, rather than the battle tome, uh, which I'll spend the most time on, is have a look at the dice. So... Uh, see. Now, not spectacularly excited, I suppose, to begin with. Um, the... <laughs> This is the bit I find, man. This is where I have to be careful not to get confused. So the skull is bad, that's a one. Uh, but you think for undead, a skull could actually be quite good, don't you? But the skull's supposed to be a one, and the hourglass is supposed to be a six. But uh, the cool... That's probably too noisy for me. The cool thing about these is, they're supposed to be a glow in the dark. So we're going to test that out now. Now it's quite difficult for me to dim the lights anymore because summer and I can't really keep summer out at the moment. They are glowing a little bit. I can see a little bit of a glow. I don't think it's really been picked up on the camera though. Uh, so the webcam's not able to detect quite a low level of luminescence. Never mind. However, we should probably also point out that I doubt many people play Age of Sigmar games in low light levels and much less in complete darkness. Right, on to the endless spells. Uh, we've got three ones here. So there's basically a bit of an hourglass one, a scythe, and a chest full of skulls. Um, the interesting bit, I suppose, will be in the war scrolls when we have a look at what they actually do. But to battle tome first, I think. So this particular one is the limited edition one. You know, 750 of those made. Um... So let's check. Obviously, you know, those who have been following will know. I say obviously, so those who are just watching this will not necessarily know. So I've had a long gap from Warhammer Fantasy. I've not actually played any Age of Sigma yet. I'm building myself up to do that in a few weeks. So let's have a look what we've got now. So obviously there's going to be some background in here. Oh, nice artwork. Yeah, this is something I've noticed when I've been looking at models as well. I even looked on the Warhammer TV. They go, oh, paint your models like this. I don't think I'm going to be doing that. The thing about this, the old greenish glow, is it's very reminiscent to me of Lord of the Rings Undead, which I'd want to move away from personally. I mean, that one, this <laughs> image here, looks, uh, that reminds me actually of the Lich King in World of Warcraft there. So I certainly want to go for something a bit different. I'm thinking of a purple colour scheme. But I will actually potentially be able to try out a few different ones. I'll be able to explain a little bit more later on. So we go through here, um, usual stuff. When we get to the rules here. So what have we got? Aha, here we go. So the allegiance abilities, what I noted was, if you watched my video last week where I'd got the big Age of Sigma Soul Wars set uh, and it included the General's Handbook 2018, and I noticed there were allegiance abilities for most things, but there's quite a few not there. And one of them was the Night Haunter. Someone said, well, that'll probably be in the battle tone that's coming out. So it is by the looks of it. Now, one thing I notice here, there's quite a lot of these battle traits. Now, there's a command ability there, so that's a separate thing. But when I looked at the allegiance things for, you know, for other ones in the General's Handbook, there tends to be a battle trait. Sometimes there's a couple, depending if you've got a particular model in your army. Here you've got multiple of them. So we've got Awe of the Dead. So subtract one from the bravery characteristic of enemy units while they're within six inches of any friendly night haunt units. Deathless Spirits. 
Roll a die each time you allocate a wound or mortal wound to a friendly Nighthaunt model from a unit wholly within 12 inches of your general or a friendly Nighthaunt hero. On a 6 plus, that wound or mortal wound is negated. From the Underworlds they come. Instead of setting up a Nighthaunt unit on the battlefield, you can place it to one side and say that it is set up in the Underworlds as a reserve unit. You can set up one unit in the Underworlds for each unit you set up on the battlefield. So effectively half your units can be reserved. You don't have to set them up at the start. Usual rules for these sort of units though by the looks of it. Uh, when at the, at the end of your movement phase, you can set up any of these units more than nine inches from any enemy models. You don't have to roll to see if they pop up or anything. This counts as their move for that turn. Usual stuff there. Feed on Terror. Each time an enemy unit fails a battle shock test, pick one friendly Nighthawk hero Within six inches of that enemy unit, heal one wound that has been allocated to that hero. Wave of Terror. If you make an unmodified charge roll of 10 plus for a friendly Nighthaunt unit, it can fight immediately after you complete the charge move. This does not stop the unit from being picked to fight in the combat phase of the same turn. So an extra little round of combat there. Um, you know, so multiple battle traits, multiple benefits to this. I wonder if this is going to be more the sort of pattern with the newer battle terms as they come out. Command traits there. Spell law. So there's a law of the underworlds. You can choose or roll for any of the following spells for wizard in a night haunt army. <clears throat> Let's just have a look at a couple here. Soul Cage. Soul Cage has a casting value of 6. If successfully cast, pick an enemy unit within 12 inches of the caster that is visible to them. Until the start of the next hero phase, that unit cannot retreat. In addition, until the start of your next hero phase, that unit cannot fight in the combat phase unless all other enemy units that are eligible to fight have already done so. Is that a benefit? Just switching the order, just making them go last, is that a benefit? I'll assume there's some benefit in that that is not apparent to me at the moment. Just go for the last one. Spectral Tether has a casting value of 6. If successfully cast, pick a friendly Nighthaunt hero within 12 inches of the caster. Heal, I assume that means they could do it on themselves as well. Heal D3 wounds that have been allocated to that unit. Mm. It'll heal. That's fine. Artifacts of Power. Ooh, hello. We've got multiple tables for this. Uh, so Weapons of the Damned. Relics of the Underworld. Infernal Lanterns, but they're for Guardian of Souls with Nightmare Lantern only. So that's for a specific character, and there's like three of those. But the other ones, I assume you get to choose one of these tables rather than take one of each. <laughs> I guess that would be the way that works. Now that is interesting because, what again, one thing I noted, comparing to Warhammer Fantasy Battle with Age of Sigma. With Warhammer Fantasy Battle, because I, you know, I didn't collect every army or use every army, of course, but I get all the army books. I used to read up on all of them. And, and I would know how my enemies or opponents isn't better with I suppose units would work so the great mystery in terms of the strength of their army was basically in terms of the magic items they took because that was the thing that was concealed and, and I'm looking at this and I'm thinking well there's not much concealed here but what there is now this looks to be a bit expanded uh, again I wonder if this if this because this is the new one is this a sign of things to come um, are they going to be doing more of this as they do new battle terms? There's a battle plan there. Path to... Oh! This isn't in my Clan Pestilence book, I think. Just again, to, to explain, I've got the um, the Grand or, or Allegiance books for, you know, all the ones for which there were. There was Order, Destruction, Death and uh, Chaos. I'm assuming those were the books that came out fairly early on in Age of Sigma's relatively short life already. And then the battle terms, I'm, I'm guessing, came later, but I don't really know. But the only battle term other than this now that I'd, I'd already got was the Clan Pestilence one, because that's the, uh, an army I wanted to build up. It doesn't have the Path to Glory rules in it that I can remember. Oh, am I missing that out? Did I miss that out? But this is quite good that it's got your Path to... Because I, I, I know... Because that sound looks quite interesting... Uh, I did actually get the electronic version of the Path to Glory book. So it's got the specific rules and tables and things for doing a Night Haunt Path to Glory. Oh, that's good. 
You've got your um, battalions. Ooh, good line. There's a lot of them. Way more than the Skaven Pestilence ones. Wow. And then the old War Scrolls, that'll be uh, in there as well. Ah, uh, the Black Coach, yeah, I saw, um, it was last week, when Games Workshop at Warhammer World had a special light like, open day. And the, the new model for the Black Coach was there. I'd noticed that the old model was being discontinued. So, uh, yeah, it looked, it sort of looked interesting. It, was, it looked quite to have a lot of fiddly bits on it though. Oh, all right, okay, so we could have a look at the endless spells here, as that's in there. So there's the Shaiish Reaper. Only Nagash and Nighthawk Wizards can attempt to summon Shaiish Reaper. It has a casting value of 7. If successfully cast, set up a Shaiish Reaper model wholly within 6 inches of the caster. Shaiish Reaper is a predatory endless spell. It can move up to 8 inches and can fly. Basically everything in this army flies. Uh, I think that's just to mimic the ethereal nature of it. Um, when this model is set up, the player who set it up can immediately make a move with it. Before moving a Shyish Reaper, pivot the model on the centre of its base so that it points lengthwise in the direction you wish it to move. Then move it in a straight line in that direction. The initial pivot is free and does not count towards the distance the model moves. After this muscle, model has moved, roll a die for each model that it moved over, including models it moved over when it pivoted. I mean, it's got an elongated base, so I suppose that makes sense. Um, if the roll is equal to or greater than the model's save characteristic, the model's unit suffers one mortal wound. Hang on a minute. After this model has moved, roll a die for each model that it moves over. But then it says that model's unit suffers one mortal wound. Well, what if it goes off over multiple models in the same unit? Does the whole unit still only take one mortal wound? Hmm. Is, is that is it me, or is that a little bit inconsistent? Another thing I'm just noticing, says if the roll is equal to or greater than the model's save characteristic, the model's unit suffers a mortal wound. So the better your save, the more likely you are to get hurt by this thing. That seems a bit mean. So if you've basically got a save of 6+, plus, you've only got a 1 in 6 chance of taking the mortal wound. And if you've got a 4, like another night, night haunt, if it's night haunt again, night haunt, you've got a 50-50 chance of being whacked by it. <laughs> that's some sick stuff there. Um, but yeah, that's, that's confusing me a little bit. So it talks about models being moved over, and you roll a die for each one. But then it just, unless it just means for each 6... I guess that's just what it means. I just don't like the wording of it. Yeah, that'll be what it means. Nothing else makes sense. If your battle is, fought, is being fought in the realm of Shaiish, a Shaiish Reaper can move 12 inches instead of 8. Hmm. And there's a couple of others as well. You can always look at those later. And... Oh. Oh. Again, this is not in my Clan Pestilence one. It's got the points value. So I... I right. This was a bit confusing, actually, because... I saw the points values in the General's Compendium, of course, last week. A General's Handbook, sorry. Um, there were a couple of things I took issue with. Now, the strange thing is, so this is what came with the Age of Sigma Soul Wars, because you, it came with some Nighthaunt models. And I was thinking, well, you know, as well as the Skaven, you know, could use some of those models to form the core of an army, but it can't really. Because, apart from anything else, so, let me try and get this the right way around now. So there's like Glaive Wraith Stalkers. So the Age of Sigma box comes with five of them. But here, unit four. So, okay, I can make a unit out of them, but I've got like one extra. And I'm going to guess, although I've not seen them on the web store yet, that you buy them in packs of four. So I'm not going to get any benefit out of that fifth one other than to try out an experimental paint job. And then the other really annoying one, it also comes with Grimgast Reapers. But it comes with four of those. But the minimum unit size is ten. Now granted, you know, in the Age of Sigma thing where it says, well, here's some Night Haunt and here's some um, Stormcast Eternals, Sigmarines. 
you know, and it gives you some point values and minimum unit sizes that would allow you to use the models it gives you in a sort of legal army against each other specifically for this, but it's not at all consistent with the established pitch battle profiles. That is annoying. I remember with 6th edition Warhammer Fantasy Battle and they brought out big you know, box sets of each army as they were bringing out the new army books. I remember in the Empire one, it came with like nine great swords when you needed a unit of 10 at least. Uh, so that was a similar thing, like it gave you an, an army that couldn't legally be fielded. So this sort of feels like the same one. So that's a bit annoying. So, because in that particular case, because I did notice that the Grimgast Reapers come in boxes of 10 on, online on the store, or in the store, I suppose, as well. So the four I've got, like, can not possibly get any use, can they? Because, you know, I get a set, or I've got 10. Well, let's say I want 20, but I still need another set. That, that four cannot ever form part of this. That is annoying. But I'll tell you what I do like, the fact that this is in this battle term. And again, I wonder if that's a new thing, because I was saying last week that the General's, the idea of the General's Handbook with the stuff, the rules type stuff is in the points, shouldn't really exist. The points really, and I know they started off Age of Sigma without wanting points in it, but that was a silly idea. Um, so if they're going to start putting them in the battle terms, maybe in a few years you can imagine a situation where basically they're in the battle terms. Um, now, whether at that point they would stop putting them in the General's Handbook or whether they'd put them in the General's Handbook anyway, because they could bring that out still as an annual that has other things in it, just like there was an annual with Warhammer Fantasy Battle for people who just wanted all their points values in one place and they didn't want to buy the battle terms, which is fair enough because they're not cheap. I mean, this one being the limited edition thing with, you know, the fancy gold trim stuff uh, was twice as much as, as the same thing would cost you for the non-limited edition version. But never mind, that's okay. Um, but they're still expensive, like 25 quid for the non-limited edition version, which is what I think it is. Uh, I think it was 20 pounds for the Clan Pestilence one. Um, and again, because it's hardback. Like, I can understand this, all right, limited edition, make it hardback. Yeah, great, thanks. But I don't understand why they make the normal ones hardback. There's no need for it. The old style army books were perfectly fine. I have still got my very first Skaven army book from the 90s and all right it's a bit worse for wear but it still functions it doesn't need to be hardback and if it was hardback i'm pretty sure it would also be worse for wear possibly an even worse state but anyway there is uh there's that and then finally uh, i guess just the war scores although of course this is not oh, 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 oh okay stuff oh, i don't like tokens but we've got tokens Command points, soul cage, reaping scythe, shade mist, grief stricken, whatever the hell all that is. I'll have to look that up. Don't know what these are. Tokens for other things. Don't know what that is. Never mind. Uh, what was that? Let's get rid of that. And then, so the special characters. There we go. Here's the black coach. The new black coach. It's still basically the same thing. I'm not sure that I necessarily. It's fancier than the old black coach. But when it comes down to it, I'm not entirely sure that I'd prefer this one. It just, you know. This whole mist thing coming out of them on the models, I'm not convinced quite works. I think you get away with it on some of the actual individual Night Haunt models. On something this size, I'm not at all convinced that it works. But the idea of a black coach in general, now I remember in Fancy Battle, it's got power level still. The power levels were based on how many people you ran over with it or killed. Let's have a look. Evocation of death is even called the same thing. At the start of each battle round, roll three dice for each black coach on the battlefield. For each four plus that the black coach gains a level of power. Oh, it's nothing to do with killing people. Levels of power are cumulative and last for the rest of the battle. They grant the following abilities. Let's have a look at a few of these. First level in your hero phase, heal D3 wounds have been allocated to this model. In addition, at the start of your hero phase, pick one friendly summonable height knight haunt unit, wholly within 12 inches of this model, and return D3 slain models to that unit. D3 slain models. What? Hmm, I'm going to have a look here, because I think some units have multiple wounds. Probably it's not going to count for a hero. Let's find something with two wounds, and then just check if maybe it's not summonable. 
because that might be the trick, mightn't it? Three wounds for this. But this is summonable. Spirit house, three wounds. That can't be right, surely. Because it doesn't say D3 wounds worth of them, does it? It just says, well, you can't see. Sorry, I'll read it to you. Return D3 slain models to that unit. And all it says is they need to be summonable. Summonable Nighthawk. Well, Spirit House, Nighthawk, summonable. X-rays. Nighthawk, summonable. Oh, I like these. Oh, the old X-rays. The Mounted Wraiths. Oh, nice one. Chain gas, two wounds, night hawk, summonable. And there's the end of the spell to the back. Brr, brr, brr. That seems a bit powerful, doesn't it? And that's only first level. Wow, the old black coach looks a bit cunning. Hmm. Let's just look at the last one. Is that the last one? Fifth level. In your hero phase, roll a dice for each enemy unit within three inches of this model. On a four plus, that unit suffers D3 mortal wounds. Reaps like corn. You can re-roll failed hit rolls for attacks made with the model's Reaper Scythe if the target unit has four or more models. Well, that is interesting. That is interesting. Um, and there we go. That's that's the stuff that comes with. I'm going to leave that out. Actually, I don't like token. I'm just going to keep all the tokens I ever get. Uh, I think in uh, the Age of Sigma box, I'll make that my room 101 of uh, Age of Sigma stuff. Don't really see the need for tokens. Dice can do the job perfectly well, especially if we keep. I mean, I, do, I don't even know how many sets of dice I've now got. Just getting that Age of Sigma set and now the Nine Haunt set here. Um, but there we go. Uh, that's you know. That's the stuff that comes with it. I think, you know, when you include this bit in it, obviously, if there's only 750, I don't know how quickly they'd sell out these things. Maybe they already have. But I don't really see if there's anything special about the limited edition nature of it other than it gets that in it. Well, that, the number. And um, the gold bits here. The content, obviously, will be the same. I guess. So what I will be planning to do, because next week, in fact this time next week, I would be off work and I will have hopes to have got much further on with my Skaven army. The Skaven are coming along. They are coming along, definitely. And I will be hoping to show off some finished models of that, really move on with it, because I'll be able to spend much more time on it. And I would be hoping to get started on some Night Haunts. My only concern is that because of the number of each model that, you, that comes with the Age of Sigma box, I thought it might form part of a core of a unit. It may not, so I may need to get some more models. Or I'll see what it actually comes with. Maybe I can make something out of what it actually comes with and see how it goes from there. But I am planning on doing, as I say, a different color scheme going against perceived wisdom. Wisdom, sorry. Um, I'm not an eccentric genius. It's not probably going to be a good idea to go against conventional wisdom. But I'm going to do it anyway to hell with it. So I hope you enjoyed it so far. If you have, don't forget to click the like button. Subscribe for further content because I am going to continue this project each week at least. And then within a few weeks, I'll be hoping to be able to present some battle reports as well in my initial forays into Age of Sigma. So thanks for watching this far and until next time, I'll see you later.